Hello and welcome to today's video. This time we're going to be bagging up about half of my vintage Albatross paperback collection. And at the end I thought we'd bag up my Muthan six pennies. So uh, without further ado, sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Okay then, so here's the very first Albatross. Now what we'll do, I'll pull sort of four at a time, I think, and just give these a very, just the top edge, a very light brush off. These have all been cleaned beforehand, so they should be absolutely fine. But since I've cleaned them, they've been on the shelf for maybe a year or so. So um, a little light dust will be absolutely fine. Now, this one's actually fairly thin for an albatross, and I suspect it will go in a regular sized paperback bag. Now, just in case you've not seen any of the, uh, yeah, look at that, previous parts to this series, most of my paperback bagging is done with these ones here, the BCW um, paperback bags. But because these albatrosses are wider in a lot of cases, um, I have got the Digest ones on standby, which are these ones, same brand, but Digest size. And I have, if, worse, if it's a really, really thick one, um, I have got some sort of nice comic bags as well. So, uh, but if they all go in here, I'll be uh, delighted, but I don't think they're gonna. Um, I think we are gonna, uh, need to use the digest bags as well. Now, I haven't actually got Albatross number one. I think it might be, I think it's James Joyce's Ulysses, you know, is number one, uh, possibly. But um, I'm very pleased with the ones I've got. I, I don't really chase Albatross down. See, this one, I think, is with its dust wrapper. I think it might struggle to go in a comic bag. Um, I don't really chase the Albatross books down. At the same time, if they come my way, and it's one I haven't got, in almost any condition, that's very tight. In almost any condition, I'll take it, even if it's a filler, uh, particularly the Albatross Crime ones, which are the red ones. So they are, well, the equivalent of the Penguin Green. And um, the red ones are highly collectible. There's uh, about a dozen Agatha Christie's, of which I've got a couple. Um, you'll see at least one today, I think, of the Christie's that I've got. Um, but they're the most sought after of all. and. Uh, they don't really turn up very often, and when they do, not in very good shape. So there, look, the blimmin' that dust wrap is folded over. That's not a very good start, is it? <laughs> but we can uh, unpick it. It's because the dust wrap is a little bit frayed to begin with. There we are. Easily fixed. And what I'm going to do with these ones is fold them over on the uh, on the edge like that so that they look a little bit tidier on the shelf. Um, I usually like to fold over the flaps as well, like so. The main thing is that it's getting them into protection. Because these are, these books are, well, these are from like 1933. So they're over 90 years old now. Yes, that's just going to struggle too much. They're over 90 years old, and I want to look after these as best I can. So by popping them in these bags, I think I'm giving them the best possible opportunity to survive a little bit longer. So here is a crime one. It's got a faded spine, unfortunately, but... To be honest, the crime ones now, they seem to be so scarce that I'm just lucky to get them in any condition, really. Now, I have done a couple of videos on Albatross, and I believe these were very much the basis for what the Penguins, a couple of years later, were based on. They're colour-coded by different genre. We know for a fact that Alan Lane, who created Penguin, um, had travelled extensively in Europe. He had seen these albatross books when he was on holiday and uh, it was probably worrying over in his mind how best to uh, bring them to a British market and you see on the back here they've got RM which is Reichmark because these were sold in Germany before the outbreak of the Second World War you got French francs and um, Lira as well um, a lot of these were printed in Paris is where they hail from. Now this one might be, might just slide in this pink one here with a bit of luck. Is that going to go in? 
Yeah. Let's do it. As long as it lies flat, I don't mind uh, slipping them in, in a regular comic bag. And that one, or paper bag, and that one does go in absolutely fine. That's about as tight as we're ever going to be able to get these. Anything more than that, we're going to struggle. And there we are. Good stuff. Here's the next four. Once again, I just give the top edges a very cursory brush, and that's it. That's literally what I'm going to do. The love of Julie Borel. I'm not going to try and squeeze that one in a, a bag. I'm just going to do it on the very thinnest ones. What I don't want to do is cause more damage by putting them in the bags. That would be a, a bit of a false economy, wouldn't it? Now, as I film this, um, last weekend was uh, the weekend of the London paperback show. And um, I saw a couple of albatross at the show, uh, but I didn't buy any. Uh, there was one crime one there, an early crime one. It was £45. So, uh, yes, I uh, left that one behind. That was a bit rich for my pocket. Now that seems quite thin, so I'll put them in a, in a regular paperback bag. Bit of a low-grade offering, but these often are, unfortunately, and uh, they weren't supposed to be sold in the UK or USA because we had our own publishers. It was continental Europe. That was the target market, you know. Um, but obviously people on holiday, they would pick them up and they would bring them home. They're so well made. They're supremely heavy. You just wouldn't believe how heavy these are. And um, I absolutely love them. I really do. They're great. Yeah, let's uh, digest one. There is quite a few of them, and I've no massive de desire to try and get them all, but it would be lovely. I, I have had a couple of like quite nice hits where Albatross books have come my way, um, you know, in, in like a small quantity. You rarely see them coming up in collections. Um, most penguin, dealer, penguin collectors I know have got a couple. Some people really love them, you know, because they are, particularly in high grade, they are beautiful, beautiful books to look at. But uh, finding them in nice condition is, is quite hard. I've got some that are very nice, but on the whole, most of them are, you know, questionable, but at least it's a copy, you know. They were reprinted, so a few of mine are reprints. Not many, but some of mine are reprinted. But I don't tend to let that worry me too much on a publisher like this, because I'm just happy to get a copy, even if it is a reprint. If you've not seen the video of the recent paperback show, it is uh, well worth it. It's uh, over on my other channel. And I got to interview some noted collectors, some paperback dealers as well. That was good. Got to interview the show's organiser. It was a really, really good fun fair. So, uh, yeah, worth a look. And uh, the next one I think is going to be in November. So, uh, Look out for that then. All right, here's the next four, another four thickies. Except one of them looks like I could get away with putting it in a comic bag. In a paperback bag, rather. This one by D.H. Lawrence here, Apocalypse. It's not one of the titles of his that I'm that familiar with, to be honest. That's 
slides into a normal paperback bag quite nicely. Now, this is an example of a really nice one. I've probably got a dust wrapper for this, um, and I've taken it out of the dust wrapper. And just look at how beautiful it is underneath. There are, there's a Dawson, which is in uh, 12 Rue Oblu in Paris. That's where this one was sold, I think, by George Barrett Shaw. Look at that. 1932. I mean, it is absolutely gorgeous. And when you can find them like that, which is not often, um, then you can really see the attraction of the Albatross books. Um, they are gorgeous when they're like that. But they just, that's a real, it may be the best one, best condition one I've got out of the early ones. They're just not around like that very often. You just have to be, have to be lucky. But I thought, why don't I just bring down the entire Albatross collection? But then I realised that, that they do take time to bag, so uh, there was just an impossibility to bring the lock down. This will be into a digest, I believe. Yeah. Here, that one. Want to be nice and tight. It's all right, it's because the spine's got a roll. It doesn't seem quite as tight as I perhaps would like that one, but it's okay. As I say, it's a bit of the price you pay if you do want to keep some slightly lower grade books. You have to accept little things like spine rolls sometimes, you know? one here which is massive so I am hoping that it will still fit into a regular bag but if not I shall just grab a comic bag that one should go in a normal paper bag with a bit of luck obviously these earlier books that's why I'm needing to have digest sized bags on hand later paper bags basically stuff from well really 1940s up should fit quite comfortably in uh regular paperback bags. See, that's not just, just not worth forcing it. Mm. 
think we might have had a chance with that one if it was a bit minter, but it's been read a couple of times. So it's not quite straight and square. Consequently, it's, uh, as you can see, it doesn't look quite as nice. Great one, isn't it? Brave New World. Now, is this going to slip in? Is he going to do the business? Or is he going to play hard to get? Yep, just... Nice one to have in Albatross. Possibly this was the first time Brave New World was popped into paperback. It's a very good chance it was because there wasn't many other paperback publishers back in this period. There were Torchnitz editions, but um, Albatross were about the next earliest. Another crime one here. Charlie Chan. I'm not going to risk, it's quite a fragile one. I'm just going to pop it straight into a digest rather than risk trying to squeeze it into a paperback. I tell you what, I've been looking at some of those classic digests and they do look really good. There's some great stuff there, but I gotta try and resist it's like going down that particular rabbit hole. I just at the moment I just don't have the room for them. As much as there's a few I'd really, really fancy getting but Particularly if I could find them in tip-top shape. This one, I'm not sure it's going to fit in a, even in a digest bag, but we'll have a go. It's probably the thickest one we've got to do today. You might be all right. Oh yeah, look at that easy. What were you worried about? Uh, pretty nice condition one, that. It's big. this way around rather than the spine way. three under here. Must, must make sure we do these in order. So that's the next four, like that. Once again, another huge one in the remnants of a dust wrapper, but it's in there as much as it's going to be. So 
So I was, uh, wife and I went for a walk earlier today and we were discussing a plan of action for when we uh, get ready to move house. And I'm going to need to put some of the book collection into storage, short term storage. Um, so the stuff that's been brushed, you know, tidied up and also cleaned on the channel and then bagged, that can all be boxed up and it can go in straight away because it's already been covered on the channel. But uh, no, I don't like that. I'm going to do it the other way around. But the stuff that hasn't been cleaned in that, that's the stuff I'm going to need to get access to. God, come on. God. I take that so good it won't even come off, so let's just leave it as is, I think. <laughs> Such a good job. There we are. She was indeed a strange case. Right, now this one I suspect will just slide in. We've got a little one of thinner books now, so... Just about a little bit of... Yeah, there we are. I think the next three are going to just go in regular paperback bags. Another real lovely, lovely copy and a wrapper which should go quite smoothly into a paperback bag. You could say it almost looks like a penguin, couldn't you? Lovely. Okay, next four. Virginia Wolf. May may just fit in a paperback bag. It might be borderline. Yeah, no good. So difficult to tell with these early books. We're talking millimeters in some cases that they're over. Big thick one. Trail of the hawk. So 
is a comedy of the seriousness of life. Well, there you go. No. See, I want to get as many as possible into the regular paperback bags, so because uh, they take less tape and they just look better, because they're more perfect size-wise. Ah, my Scotch tape's going mad. to go in a paper that bag. I'm confident. I'm confident. Quite just. Too tight. It's still too tight. We don't want the book to be curling, do we? So that's mad. So I suppose that was the big difference when Alan Lane started doing the penguins. He shaved off a couple of millimetres off the width of these books. The height's the same, but the width is ever so slightly shorter and uh, made a bit of a difference. Then it's dust wrapper.
mother's cry. Will it or won't it? I know the next two definitely won't, but it might be worth trying this one. You know, it actually will. Just. It's a tight squeeze, but it's in. So much easier when they're like that. <laughs> this is why I'm glad I didn't bring all the albatross down because it would be a very long video and uh, we'll split this into two parts. I'll do the second part of these with another other small publisher like the Toucans or something um, in a few weeks time. of a beaten up dust wrapper here but the book underneath is all right it's still going here okay Next four. None of these are going to fit, so just go straight to the digest bags, I think. Self the grief. Polis. Mm. They do look really great when they've been packed up there. That is undeniable. It's 
just seemingly such a daunting job to do the whole collection that the only way I could ever bring myself to start it was to do it in these little segments, you know, and uh, film it as we go along. So it's another chance to have a look at the books and often see new additions to the collection that may not have been seen before, you know, so... book weighs a ton it just honestly if you could feel the weight of it it's so so heavy it feels like a hardback in a minute we'll have a look at my Muth and six pennies which were printed in the uk pretty much pre-war leading into the war and um, they're nowhere near as well made as these nowhere near that's lovely now we got four more including two crime ones actually And they're the ones that are the expensive ones. I mean, probably like Penguin, there are people who just collect the crime. These have all been uh, under Albatross number 100, by the way. This is Albatross 95. That feels like it might go in a regular paperback bag. Yep. Just did. I think they were all that easy, you know? Right. This is another thinny, it's a scarce one, John Road. I've heard a lot of good things about John Road and the crime author, and I am tempted to give him a try. I've got this one in a Collins Crime as well, this particular book. I suspect this is the first time it was popped into a uh, paperback. Is my guessing. And another crime. It's probably my best condition crime of all. Uh, well, it's even got the uh, the Albatross Crime Club card. That's lovely. And I think I'll have that on the back of that one. Just because it's so nice. So that's a book I would be putting a few pounds on. If I was ever to sell this particular book, I would be uh, pricing it. I think I'll have it that way around. I'd be pricing this about 30 or 40 pounds, I would think, for that one. Particularly with the crime card in the back as well. That's, that's super nice, that, isn't it?
Yeah, that's that's lovely, that one. Right, we've got the last dozen albatross, then we've got about a dozen Muthan six pennies to have a look at. Now this is uh, one of the two Christies that I've got, is in this, in fact it's the very next one. But, although it's a thin one, I mean, it is virtually four into bits. It is Agatha Christie in all but name. I don't know, I'm taking a bit of a chance here, aren't I? Trying to slide this in. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to try and squeeze that into a paperback bag. As much as it will make it look a bit better, um, I'm just going to pop it in a digest one and fold it over. It's just too, uh, too fragile, this copy. So although it's a tatty condition copy, even in that condition with no dust wrapper and part of the spine missing, it's probably worth 10 to 15 quid for someone, you know, just because it's Agatha Christie and it's, you know, hers are just scarce in Albatross. It's as simple as that. I think this one will go through quite nicely. Dickens there. The Life of Our Lord. I, I don't know, I think that must be like an extract from one of his books, I think, or writings, or essays even. Um, that's going to be a digest. Taylors. And this one I suspect. Hmm. Is it gonna go? Is it gonna go? nice square tight copy so it slid in just nicely once so I've got the air out bird of dawning this however is a beast this is probably the biggest one of all today actually but it should it should still go in a digest yeah loads of room loads of room in the digest
tatty old copy that one, but as I've always said, it's better than no copy. All right, here's the next four. We've just got seven albatross left to do. I suspect that's going to go in rather easily. Into a paperback bag. Only just, but it, in it has gone. That one feels so much lighter, paper quality wise. Really weird. Yeah, that should go in as well. too thick so I'll pop them straight into a digest. Worth a try, it might fit. No. You could just feel it rippling there. Okay, last three albatrosses. Then we'll get out the methers. <sighs> Bit of a beaten up old copy there of wild strawberries. That one later got printed as a penguin. And these two are going to have to go straight into digest bags. And as I said, that was about half my albatross collection. So I haven't got, I mean, I, I don't know the exact count of how many were ever produced. Um, because they did come back post-war, um, of which I've got some. And there's one odd hardback, which I have got. Uh, it's pretty easy to get hold of that one. So, yes, I don't know exactly how many there are in the Albatross library, but I've probably got at least a quarter now in my collection, in, in total, of what came out. I don't really know anybody else who seriously collects them. Although I know some people have said, oh, I'd like to get the first hundred, or I just, you know, let me pick them up when they see them. 
but not many. They're generally a series which, because they're so few and far between nowadays, people don't even start. Uh, a lot of people haven't even seen them, although any long-time penguin collector has probably got a few in their collection. Because if you come across any lots of old penguins, you usually see a few of these sort of tucked in, you know, amongst it. But they're rarely offered on penguin lists, even though they're sort of distant cousins. And as I said, you can sort of understand the crime ones being, you know, in demand. And people saying, like a lot of series, oh, I'm just going to collect the crime ones. And they are by far the most collectible titles of all the albatross. So if you've ever seen a red one, it's pretty much in any condition. You might as well grab them. Right, that's all the albatross. And now we'll move on to the uh, Muth and Sixpennies. Right, well, here they all are. And uh, what I'll do, I'll just give them the brush. These are much more fragile than uh, the albatross books. They're not as well made and they just haven't survived. Once again, I don't know anybody else who actually collects these, but I've found them all over the place. But even with a saved search on eBay, and I think there's 20 in total, even with a saved search on eBay, you get one turn up maybe once in a blue moon. Now, I think there's 20, and I have got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I've got 11 out of the 20, and I've been collecting them for over a decade. So um, there you go. This is definitely, this is number one. Um, it's definitely the most common one. And uh, they all came in wrappers. Some of these I've taken the wrappers off. Yeah, Publishers of Muth and Sixpenny, 1939. So these were very much brought out, like so many publishers, on as a response to Penguin. The other publishers were looking at Penguin with envious eyes, and uh, that's why these got published. So next bagging video on this channel, we'll do the rest of my Albatross books, and we'll do another Penguin imitator, the Toucan books which are housed very close to these as well. So, uh, But I will actually feel quite relieved that these are actually bagged up because they're very fragile, as you'll see on the later ones here. And uh, every time I pick them up, I feel I'm going to damage them a little bit. So on the back, this is a first printing of number one, and on the back they have the first 14 books all like uh, totted out planned out. I always thought the hard one would be number five, P.G. Woodhouse, Sam the Sudden, but I actually did get that one, believe it or not. I was quite lucky, and the copy turned up on eBay, and I think it just went under the radar more than anything, because P.G. Woodhouse in early paperback is, once again, quite sought after. There's not that many, but there are some, and I thought oh, someone's bet that's bound to go for crazy money. It was the first one of the Woodhouse I'd ever seen for sale. Never seen one before, never seen one since. And it was on a buy it now for £20. So I just bit the bullet and bought it. And so it's the dearest one. All the rest of these Muthans I picked up for less than a fiver. So it's not an expensive series to collect. It's just so obscure. Don't expect to, to collect them in a hurry. Is <laughs> my advice to you. Because they're just not out there. They're not turning up. Although, as I said, number one seems to turn up quite a bit. That one of all, out of all of them. But yeah, it was this one here. I was thinking, well, that's going to be supremely rare. It, there, it turned up in a wrapper, uh, remnants of a wrapper. It's very, very um, fragile and brittle. So, once again, I'd just be glad to get this in a bag so I can at least handle it a bit better, you know? Or handle without worrying about it, I should say. <laughs> but yeah, quite, quite the PG Woodhouse rarity. Penguin did a, an early Woodhouse. Um, My Man Jeeves, it's like Penguin number 45, I believe quite early on. But 
But yeah, that's probably the most valuable of all the Muthin six pennies. And as I said, I paid 20 for it. You sort of put your own price on it, really, if um, the right person was in the room. They've all got this uniform sort of blue design here. And there is almost like two distinct series. I think we've got the first 14. Then the next one, 15 to 20, I think were produced under much stricter wartime paper conditions before they eventually fizzled out. And um, they're notably thinner books. So we'll have a look at those as time goes on, as we work our way through these. I think as we move closer to the war, so this one, when's this? Is this still 39? Let's see the state of it. Yeah, still 1939. It seems much thinner, that, doesn't it? Let's just see if it will go in a, in a paperback bag in a stitchery. Because they're just... Uh, Got to be careful with these, as I said, they're so fragile. Yeah, that goes in all right. That looks okay. I'm pleased with that. All right. That's about half of them now. So I'm willing to try. These look like they're thin enough to go into regular bags, so I'll keep trying. This is number 11. Red Pepper's Patience. But yeah, one of them, when one turns up on eBay, I usually just check my list. And um, if it's one I haven't got, I'll try and win. I don't think I've ever been outbid on a on a Muthan six penny because, as I said, I don't really know anybody else who collects them. So only uh, me who, just because I enjoy pre-war paperbacks uh, or pre Second World War paperbacks. Augustus Muir. And that one looks a bit thick to go in a normal, so we'll do them in a... Yes, this is number 13, and they've added on books 15 and 16 there. So that would have been definitely too big to uh, go in a regular bag. Now, while I end up doing these last few, I think next week, I think it might be the turn of the... Uh, Pelicans next week, so keep a little eye out for that next Saturday. As I said, I'm going to do the second part of the Albatross, plus I think my Toucan books, they'll be coming along in about a month's time on this channel. And I have done some of the bagging videos on the my main channel, of course. This one I think will go in a paperback bag. This is also in a wrapper. Jack London. Now this one is number 17 and it lists up to number 20. And 20 is as far as it goes, as far as I know. I don't think they went any further than that. If anyone knows any different, do please let me know because the bibliography that I've got is just based on what's on the back here. I haven't read anything about them. I'm very little online about these. So I don't know. And there it is. This is the last one, number 20. George Birmingham, the Hymn June Mystery. So I'm assuming that's a crime one. But anyway, there we are. So we've bagged the last one up. I hope you've enjoyed this bagging video. I do love uh, getting the collection. This is basically the finishing touches, isn't it? 
Um, if you have enjoyed today's video, please give it that thumbs up. Do please hit the subscribe button if you've not already for regular vintage paperback content. And I'll look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.